this is it, the last part to this car. So it is fixed. So if you're just here to know what the answer is, you'll find out in just, just a few minutes. Um, for those of you that wanna know more, um, we're gonna do some experimenting with it and uh, see if we can get a comparison of bad versus good and figure out if there's a way of knowing bad versus good on this car. So let's get into it. Well, it's been quite a while and I may actually have some hope for this car. I've probably had this car for two months now. And as you've seen in the last part, I think it's a software issue. Well, I'm starting to think it's not. So I went over with some other Ford techs at the local dealer, uh, not the one the car went to, but a different one. Um, some really smart guys over there. So let's get into what we think is the deal with this car and we might have a fix for it and please ignore this i hit my head yesterday on my door of my van stupid shit <laughs> i opened the was opening the door and somehow like tripped at the same time and just whacked the crap out of my head but anyways on this focus i was really looking over the build sheet of the vehicle looking over the options and stuff like that and when we ordered this sensor um, it did pull up the sensor the active sensor this is the active sensor um, so the car is supposed to have or not the active sensor the car is supposed to have the uh, the dual direction like it's supposed to be the directional like it knows forward and reverse so that is what this sensor supposedly is um, by the part number in the catalog so we know the ABS module could read either sensor before we made it relearn the vehicle build basically but yet once it relearned the vehicle build, it didn't even like this sensor. So we've done some research and I could not find a definitive answer to one thing. Is the reluctor ring in the bearing the same for either directional sensor? Like if it's the single direction or the dual directional sensor? could not find the answer Ford does not offer the bearing or the hub assembly without the sensor in it so I bought these hub bearing I've actually got two of these I went ahead and ordered both but this is the hub bearing for the car with the um, titanium option that has the 18 inch alloy wheel um, upgrade. Now, when you order this sensor, it's you're supposed to order it for uh, with or without uh, active park assist. The car does not have active park assist, but being the titanium with the upgraded wheels and some other things, it does have hill start assist so it i think it uses the sensor to know if the car is starting to roll backwards on a hill to help go forward i think i can't find anything really definitive about that in service information um, the ford tech that i talked to he didn't really know but by the build it in the bcm does have the uh, dual directional sensor built into the BCM data. Uh, we found that in IDS, uh, also in FJDS, whenever I was trying to program stuff, I did find that and I'll share a screenshot of that here. Uh, 
that is in the BCM configuration. So we are supposed to have the, the sensor for active park assist, even though the car does not have active park assist. So let's get back to this bearing, okay? What is different about this versus what's in here? Well, actually a lot. And I was really surprised, and this is why I'm a little hopeful about this thing. Look at that. That is completely different looking, clearly a different color. And if we go around here, let me get where you can see the, the light on this thing. Okay. So this sensor made in Mexico, all right? And the part number I don't know if you'll be able to see that. HV6T2C190, uh, I think. Well, that's a completely different part number, and this sensor is made in Hungary. Hmm. That is very strange. So, let's, uh, let's pull this sensor out and see if there's any other differences between the two. All right, so... Let's get this out. Hmm. That's uh, different. The sensor looks pretty similar. All that looks pretty similar. But this one has some kind of little thing right there. Yeah, it's got goop all over it. That one kind of has one, but it's definitely, this looks like plastic. This might be plastic, I don't know. It's, but it's definitely something different. Huh. Still, different part numbers on them. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Down in here, let me try to get you under the light. You can see that reluctor in there. It's just a magnetic wheel. So, I don't really see anything strange about that. But either way, we're going to put all of this in and see if this works in the car or not. If this doesn't work in the car... I give up. All right, we got a mess here. We got everything took apart. This is an aftermarket bearing, of course. Um, let's see, where did I see it at? Um, oh yeah, right there is the part number in the made in China. I'm not really sure what brand this is, but this is the, the other sensor from Ford. This is the one that does not go to this VIN. But the part number, if you look on here, it is, this one is made in Hungary, like this one, but the part number is still way different than what is on this bearing. I know that one's hard to make out, but that's a 2B3 something, and this is a 2C190. So, still completely different sensor. Let's get this put back in here and uh, see what happens. Uh, on another note, the reluctor in there does look exactly the same as what's in here, just a, a flat magnet ring. So, probably just three different sensors. Hopefully, this is the right one. All right, so I've got that one sensor that we know is gonna set a code, still plugged up, so we can still see we've got both codes. I just wanna know if, if I unplug this sensor and plug this new sensor in, the green one, will the code go away? Because it's a hard fault. So let me unplug this. 
Okay. Let me tuck this down here and we'll plug it up. Kind of having to do this blind. Okay. So, let's see. I don't know if I can get you in there where you can see it or not, but we're plugged up to the new green colored sensor. And if we read the code again, we should have a circuit fault probably. Um, nope, it actually didn't set the circuit fault. Let's see if we can clear this. Okay. I think last time when I would clear them, these wouldn't immediately reset. I had to go back out. Oh no, look. Holy shit. Oh my god. What? Let's go back. Let's read this again. <laughs> Let's make sure. Oh, we are on to something. Ain't that crazy? Three different sensors from Ford. And the only correct one is with the bearing. Let me get this all put together and we'll drive this thing, watch some live data and see if this is actually working. All right, so we got this one code here. I did take the, uh, the other brand new hub, pulled the sensor out of it and just stuck it in this aftermarket hub. Let's see if this code clears. Give it just a second to reread. Oh, maybe I forgot to plug it back up. Hang on a second. So when I was putting that wheel bearing the rest of the way in there, I had the sensor unplugged and forgot to plug it back up. So now let's see if we have no codes. This is a good sign though, only having the one uh, circuit code for the uh, side that I put the whole bearing in. And there we go. Let's take it for a drive. See, uh, make sure it still works. All right, got the screen capture going. And this will be the first time I've seen it move. Yes, they are reading. That's a good sign. We are reading something. Oops, I got some plastic panels falling apart. I've got a whole lot of stuff I've still got to put together on this car. I've got the whole cow still taken apart. I've got the, the glove box and all pulled out. Oh man, I've, this car, very, very frustrating. And the whole time, it's just wrong new parts. Look at this, wrong new wheel speed sensors. And the only way I got those new ones that work is getting the wheel bearing, getting the whole hub assembly. That's, that's nuts. That is just, that's crazy. So if you run into this part or this issue, make sure you get a whole brand new hub bearing from Ford because that is apparently the only way you're going to get the correct wheel speed sensor. That's crazy. But this one was a very frustrating, very time consuming, very, I mean, I got, it's had now three ABS modules put in it I've, I don't know how many wheel speed sensors now. I've, I've bought four for it. One of them I didn't open, but... And, and the four I bought was from Ford. It's crazy. And the fix 
is brand new hub bearings with the sensor from Ford. That's just crazy. The, the parts world right now is just, just nuts. It's just crazy. But that's what we have to deal with. Uh, like uh, Keith Perkins posted a video a few months ago about a Ford, I, I think it was a Fusion, I think, that had a uh, uh, AC pressure switch issue. And you can't get the correct sensor anymore from Ford. Like, they've changed the part, but it doesn't work anymore, and you can't get the correct one. How is this happening? <laughs> But anyways, thanks for following along with this massively, <laughs> I'm gonna, it's just crazy car, like the unfixable car because parts are wrong that are supposed to be right for the car. But thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys later. All right, so first off, I had a conversation with the parts guy at uh, the Ford dealer about these two sensors. He said if he ordered it by the VIN, this is 100% the correct part that Ford shows by the VIN. Um, this part that come with the hub, ironically, does not cross to this part at all. This part, uh, the part number on here, he told me this is an engineering part number, this uh, AV60-2B372-EC. He said that is an engineering number, uh, and that does cross to a part number for the sensor, but this sensor has been superseded five or six times he said um, the superseded number is actually pretty close to this part that I ordered for the uh, in the opposite sensor of what the VIN called for basically this part number is LV6Z-2C190-A the difference between the current part number for this sensor and this one is instead of an A, it's a D. So it would be LV6Z-2C190-D. Oddly enough, this number with the A does not cross to the D version. <laughs> pretty crazy he's he's about as dumbfounded as I am about these parts so his advice was if you run into a situation where you have a it has to be an original Ford one a sensor that goes bad use the number on it for them to cross reference to a new number um, I don't know how much this sensor is by itself on the new version. I didn't ask him. Um, uh, doesn't really matter. I bought hubs and put one hub in it. They're going to put the other hub in it. But either way, you know, this is the sensor it needed. So, like I said, he, he suggests getting the engineering part number off the original sensor to cross-reference to a new version of that. If you run into a situation and you're kind of worried about the replacement by the VIN number being wrong, you know, whatever. So that's a good little tip on these sensors. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna use the PicoScope. I put one of these back in it's actually this sensor is actually in the Ford hub I have this sensor in the aftermarket hub which if you've already watched everything getting to this point you know that this sensor in the aftermarket hub works perfectly fine so right now if I crank it we do have a ABS code 
for a incorrect component again. But we're going to hook the Pico scope up to both of these sensors um, down in the dash. Let me mute that real fast. So we're gonna hook the Pico scope up to the sensor wires up here in the dash and we're going to move this thing around and see if there's a difference on the picoscope between these two sensors because I still have no idea how the module can tell the difference between these when they're only just plugged in. Now with the car moving I could understand it because the way service information states this sensor works is there's actually two Hall Effect sensors in here and so there's two of them and as the magnet passes past each one of them they will have a timing difference so it can actually know when the car is rolling forward or backwards based off which sensor is getting triggered first or second hopefully that makes sense so if it's moving forward one sensor is going to trigger before the second sensor but if it's rolling backwards the second sensor will get triggered before the first sensor it's pretty pretty ingenious how they they do it uh, I, still still crazy how it's only got two wires and they're able to do that so i'm real curious about this picoscope capture what it's going to look like all right so i've got the scope rolling i've got my leads hooked up under here I can tell you channel A, the blue channel, is going to be on the known good sensor. Channel B, the red channel, is on the bad sensor, the new Ford. Well, I don't know where I laid it, but the Ford sensor that doesn't work for the car. And right now, everything's asleep. So let's wake it up, see what happens when we first wake this thing up. And y'all got the uh, uh, screen capture going, so let's shut the door. It might wake it up just shutting the door. Nope, okay, let's push the start button. Okay, we can see a slight difference in the voltage. And let me turn this off. And do you guys see something that I see? I see the blue trace. The, the correct sensor has a little thing in it every now and then. Let's see what that is. So let's pause this. This right here, this is what I'm talking about. Let's zoom in on this. What, what is going on right here? Look at that. Almost looks like maybe a, a strange kind of data packet coming out of this sensor with it sitting here doing nothing this this is the good sensor the correct sensor for the car isn't that crazy so that is the telltale sign of the correct sensor for this car now the car um does not have active park assist it does have some other options that i've already talked about and in the configuration file that i pulled out of the bcm like reading the configuration it is equipped with bi-directional sensors i don't know what all it uses for but i'm assuming the hill start maybe and some other stuff possibly I'm not real sure but the car, even though it doesn't come with um, parking assist, it does have the dual direction sensor, the bi-directional sensors. And this is the telltale sign of a bi-directional sensor. Uh, we can also see, you know, the voltages are slightly different. So let's uh, crank this thing up. We're going to roll it a little bit and see what happens with our sensors when they see the uh, reluctor go past it so let me crank it here and of course we're going to get an increase in voltage 
I still see that same little data packet here right here and you we do have some noise I'm not too concerned about the noise because it's obviously happy with it um, when there's two good sensors in here but that's pretty cool let's uh, put it in reverse roll it backwards I may need a longer time base. Let's get a let's get a longer time base. Cause we're at 10 milliseconds. Let's go 100. Are they overlapped? Yeah. Well, now that's pretty weird. My red. I need to offset these a little bit. My red trace is dipping. My blue trace is not. Ain't that crazy looking? That is that is wild. Let's move this back up here over that. And remember, the, the blue trace is the one it's happy about. It is not happy about this red trace. See, we still have this, this data packet in here. I thought that was maybe noise at first, but look at that. That is wild. That is, that is definitely wild. So, now we know the difference in the signal that the two sensors can make that is nuts I've, I've never seen anything like this never that is just wild let's get a, a few of these in here and uh, we'll offset this so these little spots right here, I'm guessing is where it is actually knowing the polarity somehow and knowing the wheel speed. That is cool. That is really cool. What do you guys think about that? That is nuts. So I guess if you're in a situation where you were wondering if you've got dual directional sensors or not on a Ford, hook a scope up. See if you can see this. But this this is tiny. You've got to have a, a pretty good scope to see this. Like this little data packet or whatever this is. I call it a data packet. I don't I don't know what this is. I don't know how to explain it other than a data signal. 476 microseconds. <laughs> that is, that's crazy. That is crazy. So, that's something to keep an eye out for. Uh, but like I said, if you're in a situation where you don't know which sensor you've got, hopefully you're not in a situation like I am where both of your sensors are gone and the car is broke hopefully you've got a known good on one side you can you can scope and uh, see what the pattern should look like versus what kind of pattern you're getting out of your new replacement sensor that is wrong that's that's nuts that is crazy I want to I just I'm curious I want to apply a filter to this it does clean it up does it actually remove any of the information yes it does a filter will remove some of the information so you can't even run a filter on your scope for this that is Oh my gosh, I'm, my mind is blown. But now we know. Um, 
I'm trying to think if there's anything I've not covered. Um, I'm sure if there's something I've forgotten that you're, I, I'm, I'm doing this because for one, I want to know, and I know some of you guys want to know this, but I'm trying to make sure I cover everything else. Um, aside from, I, I wanted to show you guys the BCM configuration file that you can pull. Um, there is a few parameters in there you can change. Anything to do with the wheel speed sensors, you, I couldn't change through Ford. Somebody in the comments on the last, on part three, is saying the uh, Force Scan beta version can change it. Um, I'm not sure. I've I just downloaded the beta version, but I've not actually hooked it up to this thing to see. But either either way, the the car was not built with Park Assist, so Park Assist is turned off, but the dual direction wheel speed sensor is turned on. I think I've probably got a screenshot of that or something. I, I can kind of share some screenshots of the BCM configuration if I've not already shared that. But this car is been racking my brain for a couple of months. The first day I looked at this car was January the 5th. Uh, today is March 13th. I uh, got the parts to actually fix this thing and actually figured it out I think on Friday, last Friday. So probably around March 8th I guess, somewhere around in there, I actually fixed the car. Found the fix to the car. Which you guys have already watched. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, hopefully the algorithm's going to really do good for this series because I need to recoup some of my lost time on this thing. There's, it's, it's, It really is turned into a beyond billable amount. Um, the amount of parts and everything that I got put into this thing. All because Ford updated a sensor and you you can't get the correct sensor by by the VIN number anymore. That the parts world is getting crazy. I tell you what. So but anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.